Okay, we'll continue with our interval routing session. If you remember, we have used a layer 3 switch which is having two ports in the VLAN 10 and the remaining two ports in the VLAN 20. And if you want to ensure that these two different VLANs communicate with each other, you need, we do something called interval routing. So we just need to go to this and create an SVI. SVI for VLAN 10, SVI for VLAN 20. Not only that, you can also use a port of a switch. This is my port which is connecting to the router. You can use this particular port as a layer 3 port also. Now by default, each and every port of your switch will be a layer 2 port which will not identify IP address. They don't really understand the IP address. And if you go to interface and if you try to assign the IP address, they will not accept. But we can change this particular port and we can use as a router port also. So generally this is more used in your WAN connections where you can have a, a layer 3 switch also connecting it to the WAN network. So let's take an example. Uh, that's what we will be trying to do here. So assume that I got a LAN one branch office on site 1 and I have one more branch office on site 2. So I want to, this is a different location where I'm using 172.16.network here and here I'm using 192.168.1.network, 192.168.2.network in multiple VLANs. So maybe you can also have a similar kind of scenario here also where you have a layer 3 switch connecting to multiple VLANs like VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30 but I'm not using that kind of scenario because we already have on this side. So just I'm using one side a normal switch scenarios with multiple VLANs other side I'm using a normal routing scenarios. But you can have similar kind of scenarios on both the sides. In our routing concepts we have learned how to do uh, inter uh, how to do communication between two or more different locations by using a routers but now we are just replacing this with a layer 3 switches now. So I have a connection here on port number 20 which is connecting to my F0 by 1 and I'll be using 10.001, 10.002 IP addresses the same way and we already have SVIs so if you are going to continue with our previous lab then we have this part is already configured and I need to configure the other part. So I want to ensure that the users on site 1 must be able to communicate with the users on site 2 that is what a typical WAN connection. So to make that possible I already have my lab if you remember we did this already we already configured these devices and if you verify my PC1 is already communicating with 2.1. 1.1 network is already communicating with 2.0 network. So these two networks are communicating with each other because we did interval routing the same lab which we did in our previous session. So we want to ensure that these two VLANs must be able to communicate with this remote site. So for that I need to have a connection so I'm going to configure everything. I'll take one router which have at least two Ethernet ports and then I, I'm going to take one consider one switch and then multiple devices so that for testing purpose. So as per exactly as per the diagram you can see there and then providing the connectivity here in the LAN and then providing the connectivity to the WAN as well. So I'm going to use one straight cable. Maybe this is not a straight cable if you if you consider it's a WAN connection it can be uh, some metro ethernet lines. So it's going to connect on port number 20. I'm going to use the exact same ports whatever uh, you can see on my diagram. Now first we'll try to configure this part. This part is the very basic CCNA. So I'll go to my PCs and I will configure the IP address as 172.16.1.1 and I'm going to use 172.16.1.100 as per my diagram. So if you see the diagram 172.16.111, 172.16.100 is my gateway. Now same way I'll go to my second PC I'll try to assign the IP address as 172.16.1.2 172.16.1.100 which is my gateway done so this is just a basic uh, CCNA I'll go to switch, switch side I'm not going to do any configurations because um, I'm going to assume that we just have a single VLAN or VLAN 1 and by default all the ports are in VLAN 1 but you can also uh, simulate a lab much more better like by creating multiple VLANs also you can try but I'm not doing this here so you know the concept so we already did the same thing here you can also try here or you, what you can do is you can just 
have a multiple VLANs here and we can also create sub interface and you can do router on stick method also in this side and you can use uh, SVI concept here so it's up to you you can just try to mix up the labs so I'm going to do it very basic lab so that you can easily understand and follow the things so on the router one I'm going to assign the IP addresses as per my diagram in my diagram I'm connecting F0 by 0 which is connecting to the site to LAN IP address is 172.16.1.100 which is my gateway and then no shutdown command and getting into my F0 by 1 interface I'm going to say IP address 10.001 with a default subnet mask which is connecting to my WAN connection or other end other end of the switch 10.001 and if I verify the IP addresses, show IP interface brief. You can see F0 by 0 interface is uh, connecting to the LAN, F0 by 1 is connecting to the WAN, just like a normal uh, connections. And now this part is configured. So only the part we need to do is we need to only configure the interface, this interface F0 by 20 on my switch. So I'll go to my switch, I'll go to my interface F0 by 20, and I'll try to assign the IP address. What is the IP address we decided? It's 10.002 with a default subnet mask. But if you try to see here, it is going to say invalid input detected. So there is some problem here. If you try to verify the command is not wrong, the command is correct. You know, we know the command we have been using for a long time. So IP address command is correct, but it's not accepting the command. And the reason is, if you remember, we discussed that by default, each and every port of a switch will be a layer 2 port which means it will only forward the traffic based on the MAC addresses it will not understand IP addresses but if you want to use this port as a layer 3 port then we need to first go to the interface and then we need to give a command called no switch port and then we need to assign the IP address so now we can also use my existing switch port as no switch port when you say no switch port means it will change to a router port so which means our switch it's a switch only whereas these ports are normal layer 2 ports forwarding the traffic based on IP addresses and this port is a layer 3 interface which is doing the same kind of job what a router is going to do so it's doing a multiple roles where it's going to forward connect the devices with L2 and L3 so that's a that's something so this is something which is mandatory you have to do we have to simply say no switch port command so mandatory so let's go to interface f0 by 20 so I'll say no switch port now when you say no switch port it's a layer 3 port now it will automatically accept the command and if I verify show IP interface brief port number 20 assigned with IP address and if I try to verify with 10.001 the opposite interface which is connecting to router 1 you can see I'm able to ping so what's next now once we configure so this is only one one thing we need to remember this port if you want to use it as a layer 3 port we need to give a command called no switch port that is one thing we need to always keep the keep the thing in mind now next thing what's next so if you want to communicate between site 1 and site 2 what is the next thing you need to do routing protocol because end-to-end -end communication we need to configure routing protocol any routing protocol like OSPF, VHRP, uh, RAP so in my case I'll simply go with which protocol let's say let's go with EHRP protocol so I'll go to switch one I'll say router EHRP 100 no auto summary network 192.168.1.network network and 192.168.2.network network and 10 dot network so on the switch I have three interfaces one is SV for the VLAN 10 for the VLAN 20 and the WAN interface now same way I'll go to my router as well on the router also will simply go to configure router EHRP 100 and auto summary network 172.16 network and network 10 dot network I can see the neighborship comes up without any problem if you verify router the neighborship neighborship has been established and now once the neighborship is established if I verify the routing table I can see these routes into my routing table and finally if you try to communicate from this host 
you will be able to communicate if you want to try that you can even try that I'm on my IP config I'm on 192.168.1.1 and I'm already communicating with 2.1 which is on the different VLAN but I want to communicate with 172.16 network which is on my different network so which is here As you can see the reply is coming and if I try to trace trace at 172.16 1.1 I can see my first packet goes to 1.100 which is my SVI interface on the layer 3 switch and then reaches 10.001 which is router which is my router and then finally reaches the destination now this way we can configure a SVI interface and we can uh, really have a communication between that so this is one method of using switch port command now there is one more method I'll, I'll give you an idea if, if it's 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 anyway not recommend it's up to you no I cannot say uh, not recommended but there's one more method where you can easily configure this particular port instead of using no switch port one one solution is I'm going to interface F0 by 20 I'm going to say no switch port because it is a direct link and then I'm going to assign the IP address and then assigning the IP address just and finally remaining everything is same now instead of going with this option or what I can do is I can go to this interface or so which means I can go to this interface and I can assign this particular port in any specific VLAN let's say I'm going to say switch port access VLAN 30 or VLAN 100 let's say okay so now once you assign this particular port in the VLAN now this will be more like an access port which means this is different VLAN this is different VLAN these three are different VLANs now and next what I can do is I can assign the IP address to the VLAN 100 and then I can I can communicate like this this is one more method I can do I can say 10.001 and then 255.000 sorry 25 10.002 so this is also one more method now this method is more uh, generally recommended if you don't have a direct link between these two like uh, let's take an example this is my layer 3 switch which is my switch 1 and it's connecting to router which is my router 1 but in between you have some other switches inside the service port network which are access by trunk links now in this case I cannot use no switch port command if I use no switch port it will be a layer 3 interface which means the switches will not understand the layer 3 interfaces so this is more common in, in a production networks or in a CCI lab design uh, probably this is one more way now we need to assign this particular port in the VLAN 100 and then we are going to assign the IP address to the SVI and then we can assign the IP address here and the intermediate devices will be your trunk links which means it will it will allow the VLAN 100 traffic over the trunk links just like a normal trunk links now this is one more method in this kind of scenarios we generally follow this method but if you have uh, a switch one and your router is kind of direct connection then it's more recommended you just go with no switch port command because you don't need to create a VLAN and you don't need to just go with any layer to switching so we are using as a layer 3 interfaces so we can directly go with layer 3 interfaces so these two possible solutions let let me just quickly configure this and I'll show you this the second solution I'll go to my switch and what I'll do is uh, routing protocol is configured so I'm not going to touch that I'm going to simply going to my interface F0 by 20 and I'll say switch port when you say switch port means automatically it will become a route switch port now if you verify the neighborship everything will go down and everything will be removed if you see IP address still the IP address is there I'll remove it so when you say switch port means it's it's so anyway it's, it's actually removed it is showing here but if you verify show run configurations So port number 20 you can see there is no there's nothing configured so it's just a problem with the packet tracer program so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this particular port number 20 switch port mode access switch port access VLAN VLAN 100 so VLAN 100 do not exist so it will automatically create and then I'm going to assign the IP address whatever I decided 
Now this time I'm not using the IP address on my physical interface. I'm going to use it on my SVI interface and that interface has to be a part of that VLAN just like we have here. IP address and then what is IP address? It's 10.0.0.2 Just a minute. I'll, I'll need to uh, remove it. It's not taking so probably what I'll do is I'll erase the configs and I'll just start up reload the device. So it's a, it's a problem with the program in general it, it should not do like this. So if I erase the configs, I think I will re I will lose all my configurations. I lost all my SVIs also for VLAN. It's okay. So I have to configure everything again. So quickly I'll do that. I'll go to my interface range F0 by 1 to 2. Switchboard mode access, switchboard access VLAN 10 and interface F0 by 3 to 4, sorry range, switchboard mode access, so I lost my config so I had to reconfigure everything. Access, switchboard access, VLAN, VLAN 20, and then interface F0 by 20. I'm going to say switchboard mode access, switchboard access VLAN 100, and then I'm going to assign the IP address of VLAN 10 will be 192.168.1.100. 1 and VLAN interface VLAN 20 will be 192.168.2.100 and interface VLAN 100 will be IP address 10.0.0.2 to so I should have changed the IPs instead of doing all these things okay so now you can see what I did I configured this port number 1 and 2 in the VLAN 10 3 and 4 in VLAN 20 just like we have in the previous case but this port, port number 20 is no more uh, no more a uh, layer 3 port it's a normal switch port but that port I'm going to assign in the VLAN 10 and it's I'm going to assign the IP address to the SVI and now if I try to ping to the opposite interface if everything is perfect then I should be able to ping just like we did previously and now the what I, I removed the config so I, when I rebooted everything was gone so I'll I'm going to configure the EHRP, advertising the 1 dot network, advertising my 2 dot network and advertising my 10 dot network. Now you can see my neighborship is up. So it, it's working in the same way like it, it used to work previously but you just need to remember when, when we use this type of implementations especially when you have a scenario where your switch is not directly connected to your router but in between you have some intermediate trunk links through which you have to go. In that case, you have to send a packet as a layer 2 packet only. So, which means then we have to assign the IP address to SVI interface, which will take care of the layer 3 forwarding. But when you have a direct link between the routers or between two L3 switches, and if you want to do routing between these two L3 switches, you can simply say no switch port command. But if you want to uh, forward to layer 3, layer 2 traffic and then layer 3 switched, we can use this kind of implementation. So, both, both are correct both are uh, the best way you can do so this is the one method and this is the one method so it's, it's always important for you to know both the ways of doing these things